I'm Anita from BeanDesigns.com. I'm all about helping you by providing tools so you can create awesome digital scrapbook layouts using GIMP. In this video, I'll share with you the steps that I take to finalize my layouts. While most layouts do look great with the basic components of a background paper, photos, title, journaling, and accent elements, taking the time to add dimension will help the layout go from great to awesome. Here is a look at a recent layout I have that I completed and it doesn't have any dimension yet. So you see the outer edge is pretty flat, there's no shadowing, and the background papers don't have any shadowing buttons. This is the same layout with shading, with dimension added. The papers have some dimension around the edges, there's shadows on the button, the flowers. When you're looking at your title, this particular one, I did put shadows on the letters. Another option for this title would be to think about it as a sticker, and it, that would be flat. You get to choose whatever you want because this is your layout, it's your creation. I just want to show you the things that I do. I have completed my layout, and I'm ready to add the dimension to it, just the final steps. I'll start the bottom of my layer palette my background paper. I'm going to duplicate that. <clears throat> I'm going to make a selection all the way around the outer edge and delete the inside, just leaving the selection on the outside and do some shading on that. So let's, to do that, I duplicated my layer. I'm going to go to my selection tool. I'm going to feather my edges up Right now it's 88.2 with a rounded corner of 401. Then I'm going to draw a selection around just inside the outer edge. With that selection, I'm now going to delete the inside, whatever is selected. I'm going to delete that. You can use the delete key on your keyboard. You can do Control X or you can go to Edit, Cut, Control X, any of those options. When you do this, it fills, GIMP will fill your, your deleted area with the background color. If you have something other than white, it affects the end result. So you want to have your background color white. We have now selected the inside portion of this duplicated layer. It's gone, right? We want to apply a mode to what's left, the green that is left, the paper that is left. So you select mode at the top of the layer palette and choose multiply. You can definitely choose other things. You can definitely feather more. You, This is all something that you get to play around with. The next thing that I do is I reduce the opacity of that layer and give it whatever look I want for this particular page. To me, it makes it look like there's a tiny bit of a curve on the edge of the page. Once I finish with the background paper dimension, move on up my layer palette. So I'm going to go to my cut paper and I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to right click on the duplicated layer and choose alpha to selection. I'll then go to select feather because I want to feather the selection by 25. Okay. Then I'm going to shrink the selection by 10. This gives us a smaller selection with an outer edge and which is what is going to remain because I'm going to delete the selection, return to my layer palette, to my mode and choose multiply. Let's do another one here. Let's do this pink layer so that we can zoom in and take a look at it. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, right click, alpha to selection. I'm going to feather that selection by 25 and shrink it by 10. Then I will delete our selection and add a multiply mode. Let's zoom in and see what we just did. 
So here, let's select none. I'm going to hide our layer addition. So here is the cut layer, and here is our dimension on the top of it. See how it adds that? Let's take a look at the first paper that we did. This one it was right here. And hide the edge and show you the edge. Let's take a look at the edge of the background paper. I'm going to hide it and then show it. See how it's very subtle and yet it's very effective. Let me do one more. Let's do this yellow layer. I'm going to duplicate the layer. Alpha to selection. I'm going to select feather by 25. Select shrink by 10. Delete the selection and add multiply mode to what is remaining on that layer. And you can select none and you can see what is left. I will do the very similar thing to our photo by duplicating the photo layer, alpha to selection, feather that selection, and shrink the selection, then delete the center, and I'm going to add the mode difference to the outer edge of our photo to give it an inked edge. So let me do select none, and you can see this inking that is there. I'm going to hide it and add it. So it adds this real unique dimension to your page. Next thing I would do, I will work up my layer palette. I'm going to start adding shadows to all of my elements. Let me show you a couple of things that we could do here. We could make this into a button. So let's uh, alpha to selection on a duplicated layer. Then let's do the same thing we've done with our papers by feathering our selection and shrinking it, then deleting it and adding a multiply mode. And so here we have hidden and there. So it makes it, it's very subtle, but it can make it look like a tiny button. See? Or you could not do that. Let's make the main layer active. We'll go to filters, light and shadow, and add a shadow to it. Apply that. And there we have a very different look. It has a shadow on it. It's kind of flat, but it's got a shadow on it. You'll notice that when we had the selection, um, let me show you, let's look at this green button. Okay, so the green button is active. It's outlined in the yellow. And the yellow outline is closely around the whole perimeter of the round button. If I do filters, light and shadow, and drop shadow, watch our yellow box. As the shadow is added, the yellow box expands to include the shadow that is around the edge of our button. Let's undo that, undo drop shadow. If I went to filters and it says, oh, you want to repeat? Look here, do you want to repeat the drop shadow? Because we just did that on this white button, right? The white sticker. We could do repeat drop shadow, dung, but the yellow box does not grow with the shadow and it actually ends up having a square outline on our shadow. The same thing happens if you um, did the control F, the box does not expand. Under the current edition of GIMP, you will need to go through all the steps of filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, if you want to have a rounded shadow 
on your elements. So let's go to edit, undo, drop shadow. And then I want to go to the green button and I want to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. And I get a real drop shadow on my green button. So let's take a look over at our title here. Let's make our title active. So here's my yellow box. My layer is active. Let's go to filters, light and shadow, and drop shadow. And there's, there is our shadow, it appears, and we click OK. So let me go out. We've added a shadow to our title. We've added dimension to the outside edge of our page. And we've added dimension to our papers behind our photo. And we also inked the edges on the photo, added some shadows. So that's what you would do to add dimension to all of the elements to make them look like they are 3D. I hope you enjoyed this and it's going to make your digital scrapbook layouts more awesome. I do have other tutorials on my channel, so if you are interested, you can definitely check those out. Subscribe, like this video, and I encourage you to continue preserving the memories for future generations. Bye-bye for now.